Yeah, Thank so there's you. our objective. Um, and today's date, by the way, is March 23rd, 2020. Um, this lesson is probably the hardest lesson you might ever have in geometry. So just a heads up. This, I think, I can't think of another lesson that's harder than this lesson in all of geometry. So sorry that we have to do this via Zoom, but there it is. Why is it so hard? It's because you Whatever. It's okay. don't need to just complete the square once. You need to complete it twice, and then you're still not done. You still have other stuff on top of that. All right, here we go. Standard equation. Do you guys remember the standard equation of a circle? If you do, then give me a yes so you can participate. If you don't, I guess you don't have to use the nonverbal feedback. Look back at your notes for 9 dash, or sorry, 6 dash, 10, 6 dash, uh, nine and eight i think all of those have the standard equation of a circle in them what is the standard equation of a circle anyone with a yes anyone at all not a single person has said yes i'll give you guys a hint it's like something squared plus something squared is equal to something squared you guys remember that form can i say it yeah, go for it okay Okay, a squared. Is that wrong? It's wrong. Yeah, sorry, but you I can, knew I'll, it. I'll, I'll <laughs> I do hint. So we have an X here, and it's either an H or K. Typically, with this, is it going to be? You don't have to do it though. If you don't, if you don't. No. Uh, by the way, Josie, Wanted when you it. when you log out of Zoom, like when you're out of this room. Um, when yeah. you open Zoom for the, for the first time, you're allowed to name yourself. Name yourself there, and then it will always have your name because otherwise, okay. every single meeting you'll have to rename yourself. Okay. Um, Andres, you already read stuff. Uh, Jenny, you have a question? Oh, I know the equation. Oh, yeah. So if you just put a yes, then that means you're ready to participate. Yeah. What is the equation, Jenny? Um, x minus h squared yep plus y minus k squared <laughs> equals r squared there it is yeah thank you all right so hopefully that was the easy part of the note because we're going to be doing something that is much much harder we're going to see something that looks like this down here and just from seeing that, you should be able to tell me where's the center? What's the X and Y coordinate of the center? And what's the radius of your circle? Those are the main questions. So again, what is the you center? Am I lagging? Yes. Yes. Like bad. Yeah. I didn't even hear what you said. Um, no tweaking. I, I don't know, guys. Um, you say still? it again. So the center, we're going to be dealing with. No, you're good right now. This equation right here. Just from that equation, we're going to have to be able to determine what is the x and y coordinate of our of our center, and what is the radius of our circle. Just from that line down there. So how do we do that? You're going to boil it back down into this equation right here. And once again, once you get into this equation, I'm giving you like the last two steps. Um, this is going to be the x coordinate of the center. This is going to be the y coordinate of the center, and this is going to be the the radius of this of the circle. So I'll write down this is the radius, and I'll give you a hint here. Remember to take the square root of it in order to get r by itself, so it's not r squared. And these are going to be the the center of the circle. So the center. This is the x coordinate of the center, and this is the y coordinate of the center. So your center has the coordinates h comma k as long as you take the opposite so i'll write in here for the notes opposite so for example if i had like x plus one that would be my x coordinate is negative one i have to take the opposite of whatever that is and hopefully that sounds really familiar that's what we've been doing all of last week am i lagging again Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that right now because I'm, I'm like right in the middle of us and I can't spend 20 minutes troubleshooting my internet. Sorry, guys. 
continue. Right, continue. Yeah, continue. <laughs> um, essentially, I'm showing you going backwards here. We want to start with this and go this way. This is going, if I go this direction, that's completing the square. Complete the square. This should be a roadmap of what we're going to be doing today. Essentially, we're going to start with this bottom step and then go up from here. So it's not super important that you have all this copied down. Um, it is going to be a little bit helpful while we're working on the notes. But the main thing that you need to have copied down is examples on how to complete the square and stuff like that. So I'm not going to spend too much time time on that. I'll kind of try to leave it on the screen. I'll leave it right there. All right. So let's talk about how we complete the square again. So x minus 3 quantity squared. If I am multiplying this out, and you can kind of see this up here, you have an x minus 3 and x minus 3. I'm just, I want to see what happens. What do I do when I multiply out x minus 3 quantity squared? All right. Go ahead and give me a yes in the nonverbal feedback if you want to participate and tell me what is one of these four cells? Gunner, is that a yes? No? Okay. So Andres can't call on you because you've already participated and you get someone else. Um, no one knows what X times X is right here? All right, Andres, go for it then. You sit down. You'll have to unmute your microphone too. Oh, uh, my bad. X squared. X squared, perfect. Jose, what about this top right square? What is negative three times X? You sit there. Oh, yeah, sorry. You need to unmute yourself too. Oh, negative three X. Negative three X. Perfect. And then I'm just going to probably start cold calling on people because we need to go fast here. Um, yeah, Gunner, can you do X times negative three right here? X times negative three? Yes, please. And negative three X? It is indeed negative three X. And finally, we'll give it to Cohen. Let's do negative three times negative three. Uh, uh, positive three, or positive nine. Positive nine, yeah. Thank you. All right, so that means if I add up all of this area, again, my like terms are typically the ones that are in the, the diagonals here. If I add up all that yellow, I'd add up to x squared minus 6x plus 9. Do we vaguely remember doing this method? Hopefully. What is that method called, Mr. Called, Mr. Sindo? We call this the box method or the rectangle method. There's a bunch of different names for it. Um, Eureka Math uses tabular method, um, but it's the same thing that you're doing over and over again. It's how you multiply out binomials or any polynomials for that matter. All right, so now we're gonna go backwards. Completing the square is going backwards. I'm telling you, we're gonna start with x squared minus 10x, and you'll notice there's a lack of a constant term. That's on purpose, because that's exactly what completing the square is. When I say completing the square, that means I'm adding on a number right here that makes this a square number. Notice that this is x minus three squared. I need to somehow find something with x in it, plus or minus something squared. I don't know what this number is, in order to find this number, I have to find that number first. Let's do this together, guys. Here we go. I have x squared and minus 10. I can fill in the sides after I fill in the inside now. So I'm going backwards. Before we did the sides, and then we did the inside. Now we're doing the inside, and then we're going to figure out the sides. So I know x squared goes right here. Also notice that whenever I have a perfect square, 
these two numbers are the exact same number, which is equivalent to telling you divide this negative 10 by 2 to put it both here and here. So is there anyone that can give me a yes in chat or in the, not chat, in participants? Tell me what to put in these two spots. Andres again. Yeah. All right. Um, it's going to be negative uh, 5x. Negative 5x in both spots, exactly. Okay, so we have put this x squared minus 10 inside of the area. Now let's try to solve what these sides are. I mean, this spot and this spot should be fairly obvious to most of us. Jose, you want to do that for us? Mm, just be x, right? X and x. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start cold calling on people because you're not saying yes enough. Um, I'm looking for this spot right here. You have five seconds to try to tell me what this is, otherwise I'm cold calling. Julian, go for it. Oops. Negative five. Sorry, Monster. Yeah. Negative five. And Jenny, you want to do this one up here? Uh, negative five. It is also negative five. Perfect. So we filled in the sides and now we can determine what this missing number is. This missing number right here. Is there anyone else that can tell me that? Um, and I'll go ahead and put your, your figurative hand down. Um, what should go in this final spot right here? <laughs> no, it's Julian. Uh, yeah, let's go with uh, Monse. Yeah. Okay. I say it one one more time. Twenty five. Yes, twenty five. So that means I really have plus twenty five here, and now I know what my square is. My square is x minus five times x minus five, or x minus five squared. We have made a square by completing the square. The completing of the square, and I'm doing air quotes if you can't see my camera. The completing of the square is the adding 25. By adding 25, look, this now is a perfect square. Without that 25, it's this weird L shape. But by having that 25 and making sure that all the math works out, it is a perfect square. And then if I were to factor it back down, it would be x minus five quantity squared. All right, so we're doing this process over and over and over again today. So by the end of the homework, you'll probably have done this 15 times. And then on top of the lesson, which we're doing four times. So you'll have roughly 20 times of keeping the square under your belt. All right, so, hey bud. Um, all, right. all right, so we're on to our first final example. Finally, sorry bud, I can't, I can't leave. I know you wanna go <laughs> ride a bike with me. Oh, all right, leave. I know, I'm sorry bud. I'm sorry bud. Okay, so the first step that we're gonna do here is we want this x squared term and this negative 14 x. Why do we want these? These are all the x terms. That's gonna be our first problem. So let's pull the x terms off to the left. I'm gonna have x squared and minus 14 x on the left. I'm gonna go ahead and complete the square with this one and then eventually I'm gonna complete the square again with a y squared and a positive 12 y. I know, I'm sorry, Do You wanna sit on my lap? Sit on my lap. Sindel, you made him cry. Sindel Curry. <laughs> Are you Are simping for Riley? Our first step is we're separating the X's on one side, the Y's on the other. And you might be saying, wait, Mr. Sindel, what happened to that positive four? Ignore it for now. Just leave it. Leave it be. Um, or if you want to go ahead and skip a step, we can subtract four. Eventually we're going to be moving all of our constant terms to the right side. So you can subtract four from both sides. In fact, I'll just go ahead and do that right now. Minus four, minus four. So this four is gone. I now have a negative four on the right side. Oh, don't hit buttons on my keyboard, please. Riley, if you can't touch. Hi, Riley. You can't touch your keyboard if you're going to sit on my lap. Okay, sorry. I have to put you down then, bud. Sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I'm trying to teach, bud. All right, we are completing the square, this x squared minus 14x. So go ahead and make your square. 
This is the square that we're going to complete for our X's. Okay, you, you can't touch the laptop if you're up here. Just have to sit here and learn some math. Come on, Wayne. It's gonna get really smart, guys. All right, so again, the same step that I was doing up here on the, in the top right up here, I'm doing the same steps up here. So here we go. I put in my X squared term. My X squared term goes in the top left. This negative, please don't touch Riley. This, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> this negative 14x, I'm going to divide that by 2 to put it in the top right and the bottom left. You want a pen? Here. Here's a pen. Enjoy. You good there, Mr. Sindel? I think so. So it's going to be a negative 7x and a negative 7x. I'm dividing that evenly between the bottom left and top right of my general rectangle, of my, uh, my box method. You want me to okay, click like look at this? All right, someone with a yes in the um, nonverbal feedback, tell me what should my sides be? Someone can tell me right now, this side is this, this side is this. Who has a yes? This is the equivalent of raising your hand. So I see Jose and Andres have their hands up. Who can tell me how to do this? Again, I haven't heard from everyone, so I'm just gonna start cold calling again. Uh, Sergio, let me unmute you, Sergio. Sergio. What goes on either side? Um, what side? Either side, that side or that side. Give me any part of this side. X. It is indeed X. So X and X. And Sergio, what about this number and this number? Negative seven. Negative seven and negative seven. They're the same number. And I'm not done, Sergio. The last thing that I need from you is what is this cell value. What is the value that I need in order to complete the square? Negative 14. Be careful. Negative 7 times negative 7. I mean, so it's 49. It is 49. Thank you. All right. So Sergio has found the value 49, which will complete the square for the x's. All right. But think of this this is an equation. I can't just say plus. 49 to the left hand side and not add it to the right hand side that would leave the equation unbalanced So I need to add 49 to the right hand side as well So I'm gonna have like a, a running tab of all the numbers. I'm adding to both sides So yes, I've completed the square for the left hand side. There it is now I need to add that same 49 plus 49 to the right hand side. I have to add it to both sides of the equation Let me move this right here. Can I be co-host, Mr. Shindo? <laughs> no, he may not. <laughs> All right. We have completed the square for the X's. Now let's complete the square for the Y's. I'm not even going to do the setup. I'll, I'll write the box for you. Here's your, your box or your general rectangle. Now you guys are telling me, where do I, where do I put the Y squared term? Where do, what do I do with that 12Y? So someone that has a yes, yeah, Jose. Um, in the top left, right? Top left goes the, the y squared, Riley. God, you can't be hitting my laptop. I'm trying to teach you. Y squared, perfect. What about the 12y? Anyone? Can someone give me a yes to tell me what to do with the 12y? Andres, go for it. Oh, my bad. My, my mic was off. Um, the 12y goes right there. 12y right there. Then what goes down here? 12y. Oh, no, because if I add 12y, so you're, it's, I'm really glad that you made this mistake because I made this mistake all the time. If I do 12y twice, this adds up to 24y. So I can't put 12y there. I have to evenly divide that 12y between those two spots. Oh. So do you have to do 12y divided by 2? Exactly, which is? 6y. 6y and 6y. Perfect. Now all this box adds up to what I started with. y squared plus 12y. Perfect. All right. Um, someone that I haven't called on. I think there's only two people. No, three people left that I have not heard from yet today. Oh, no, it's four people. It's quite a few people I can still call on. I'll look, let's give it to Josie. Uh, Josie, what should go here and here?
Why? <laughs> exactly. Why and why? Um, let's give it to someone else. I, I'm kind of forgetting who I'm not calling on, but hopefully I'll get everyone multiple times. Jessica. Um, Jessica, what should go here and here? Would be six six. Six six. six. And then and it'll then be then. Um, <laughs> and then. Um, and then who else have I not heard from in a while? Yeah, Edder, sure. Edder, what should go in this box this right here, this cell? Uh, six times six. Wait. 36. Uh, Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, Edder. It is indeed 36, which means this value that Fernando and Edder have both told us, this is the <laughs> value that completes the square. We need to add that value to both sides. All right, so there's my running tab of all the numbers that are going to be on the right-hand side. And look at this. I have a perfect square and a perfect square. How do I know that those are perfect squares? Look at them. This is the shape of a square. That is also the shape of a square. It has the same dimensions. Same dimensions. That's the definition of a square. Wow. All right, we're, we're almost done, guys. Like, the hard bit of math is out of the way. We just need to write the side of the square. The side of the square is x minus 7. Look it up here. I want to write it in this form right here. I have x minus 5. It's the side of the square that goes inside of this parentheses, and then I square that. So it's always the side of the square. In fact, I should probably write that down. It's kind of important. This is the side of the square inside the parentheses. The side of the square goes inside the parentheses. I'll leave that up for another 10 seconds. And then those of you that are really fast at copying that down, what does that mean for our problem? In our equation, on the left-hand side of the equal sign, I should have two of these, one with an X and one with a Y. So let's come down here. I have this problem now. One with an X, one with a Y. What should this square turn into? Anyone have a yes to, to raise your hand? I uh, go for it, Andres, and then Jose, you can get the next one. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, would it be x minus 7 squared? It is indeed x minus 7 quantity squared, which is the side squared. Yeah. And then, uh, Jose, go for it. Plus y plus 6 squared? There it is. y plus 6 squared. And these are being added to each other. And now that's going to be equal to what's on the right-hand side. I just have to add all these values together. So I think it might be, uh, it's not yeah. easy somewhere or the other. Oh, yeah, look, pause. Yeah. All right. Can someone add all three of these constants together? Negative 4 plus 49 plus 36. 81. Um, okay, well, well, thank you for saying it, but it, I was just going to call. Oh, I'm sorry, boss. Um, 81, yes. Uh, Fernando, do you know how to use the, the raise hand in Zoom? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought, I thought we were doing that. Okay. I'm going to try to do that just to keep it more organized, but thank you for letting me know that it's 81. Cool. Look, guys, we're, we did it. That was the whole goal. Look at the objective. Can you complete the square to convert into a standard equation? Can you convert it into this form? Look, it's in that form. Look at this thing. It matches the standard form. And now we can say, okay, the center has these x and y coordinates. And what is the radius? The radius is blank. All right, so I need two more volunteers. Um, let's go with Andres. Oh, you. sorry. <laughs> I thought that you were muted. Okay. Um, um, it's going to be x plus seven well hold on the, the center is just you take the opposite of this number and the opposite of this number oh so it's going to be positive seven and negative six there's the center the center is seven negative six all right and then jenny what's the radius uh 81 careful so remember this is radius squared so in order to get the radius with the square root number. uh nine nine done all right, I agree. That's crazy. Look at this. You had this Blazing. giant polynomial 
with different letters in it, equaling, an, equaling zero in this case, it could have been any number, and you can tell me just by looking at this, doing a little bit of math, hey, not only do I know that's a circle, but I know that's a circle, and it, I know where the center is, and I know how big that circle is, doing some math. All right, so we only have three minutes and 45 seconds left of class. So please try to attempt to do um, example number two, and then I'm gonna be putting up the homework um, in about uh, a minute. So I'll, I'll leave that up here in case you didn't copy it all down. Everyone should be trying to do example number two on the back. It's very, very similar to what we just did on example one. All right, so I'm gonna complete the square. I'm gonna put the x squared and then minus eight x on this side. I'm gonna put the y squared, and there is no other y term, which means it's like plus zero y. If, if, um, it's the same thing, right? So from here, I'm gonna complete the square. Here we go. Completing the square, I have on the inside an x squared term, and that negative eight x is div divided by two, negative four x, negative four x. I have x minus four on the side. I should do this in a different color. Um, x minus four, x minus four, and then inside I should get 16. That means I have to add 16 to the left, add 16 to the right, and I should have, from the very beginning, added this 84 to both sides to get rid of it, plus 84, plus 84, and those cancel out. I've completed one of the squares, let's complete the other square, here we go. Setting up my general rectangle. I have a y squared term, and if you really want to, you can say zero y, zero y, and this is gonna be on the sides, y times y, and then it's plus zero, plus zero, which means zero times zero is zero, and most of this is zero, which means by completing the square, I don't have to do anything, and think about what that means. Completing the square means we need to make a square, but y squared is a square. You're literally saying y squared, which means it is a square, which means I didn't have to do anything. I'm adding zero to both sides. So I, I don't have to do this. I don't have to say plus zero. I can get rid of that too. I, I'm not really doing anything. My equation, if I'm boiling this down, I'm going to do the side of the square. So it's going to be x minus four quantity squared and the side of the square, which is just y squared, adding those two together is equal to, and I add these two together and I get 100. We have five seconds left of class, and here we go. Um, that means that the center is four comma zero. There's nothing being added to the y, then the y coordinate is zero, and then the radius is the square root of 100 or 10. That concludes notes six 